Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the best, the most authentic true crime channel yet to ever come to YouTube. For those that are new, I just give my honest opinions and reactions to anything true crime related. So if you're a fan of true crime or anything true crime related, I would advise you to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell. So that way you get notified every time I post a new video. Also, check out my Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Real True Crime King. I've got a lot of goodies over there. I've got different packages for all every type of budget. And I've got different... Um, things that you can do all kinds of goodies over there welcome to the channel and let's get to the video good morning ladies and gentlemen how are we doing today i'm back true crime king and uh, uh today's video i'm gonna be watching crime circuses Evidence, Brian Koberger, Evidence, exclamation point, Visual Snow, and DoorDash. So, let's see if he's got anything new. And I'll react to it. Hit that like and subscribe button. And here we go. Starting the Moscow, Idaho case, we're going to discuss new information, new revelations, new findings, and updates. We're going to talk about the door. All right, so he said new three times, so I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be some new stuff, right? Dash order. I think that's super important. We're going to look at a new visual of the house that's been created. We're going to talk about Brian Koberger's sister. She starred in a horror movie. Was she recently at the crime scene? We're going to discuss visuals. Koberger's sister uh, doesn't look anything like Koberger. No, Brian Koberger allegedly had visual impairment. There's some other tidbits of info and there's a lot to discuss in this case. Let's jump right into it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name is Drip Drop and I'm your host as always. For those of you that aren't familiar, four college students were slain in Moscow, Idaho, just outside of the Idaho campus. I've previously released multiple videos on Brian Koberger. If you want to learn more about this case, make sure you check out my previous releases. I have an entire playlist for this case. A very brief disclaimer. All words, names, and everything spoken in this video is presumed speculation, guessing, theorizing, and non-factual. Brian Koberger. All right, so everything he's saying is not fact. Keep that in mind. Koberger is presumed innocent, however, the police arrested him because they believe he's guilty, and the state attorney is following through with the charges because they believe he's guilty, too. I believe he's guilty. What do you think? I can say it, right? I guess he doesn't want to say it, but I'll say it. Leave me a comment down below. We're just going to jump right into this video and start it with a boom. Starting with a boom. I guess he does that on, on, on all his videos. At least the three on on uh, on this case. I like it. Check this out. In the beginning, most of us believe the two surviving roommates, Bethany and Dylan, were sleeping on the first floor. Since then, we've learned Dylan was sleeping here on the second floor, along with Zana and Ethan, located here. Okay, so yeah, this is this is a good one. I don't know where he got this, whoever that girl was talking, but okay, here is where Dylan was, right? And here is where uh, Kaylee and Maddie were killed, right? Uh, I mean, how did, she was awake, she wasn't sleeping, so I, I don't know why they have her on, on the bed, but how do you not hear something, right? Kaylee and Madison were located here on the third floor. Yeah. And we know from uh, an ex-roommate that lived there, you can hear uh, uh, everything that's going on. You know, he, he said that the floors are very uh, skinny, and you can hear everything. The dog was located on the third floor and the room by itself. Let's move around and see through the walls into the kitchen. Okay, look. So 
here's the stairs, right? So I, Dylan's door must be right here. I mean, come on. And here's the slider, right? So let's say she's standing right here, you know, and he's right here. That's not far at all. I mean, and there's no one else on this, on this, you know, because he already went in this room and killed Xana and Ethan. So he knows nobody else is on this floor. Why he didn't attack Dylan, I have no idea. And why he went up these, he went up and down these stairs and went past her room, I still don't know. It's, that's uh, still bugging the hell out of me. To the back slider and take a look at the time frames. At 4.04 a.m., the suspect can be seen trying to park his car. At 4.09, approximately five minutes later, he enters the house through the back slider. At 4.18, he leaves the house after committing the crime. All right, so they're saying now he entered and exited through the back slider. So, you know, when he comes in and goes out, he's pa he has to pass Dylan's room. At 4.20, he's caught on camera driving away at a high rate of speed. All of this only took nine minutes. Let's watch what that looks like. The suspect enters through the back sliding door. He pauses at the stairs to look around to make sure. Yeah, okay, well, if, when he, if he pauses at the stairs, I don't know how do they know he pauses at the stairs, right? But if he does, then he that means, and D Dylan's awake, right? Why didn't he go in this room first, right? No one's up. He then turns and goes upstairs. But they were up. And we know Xana at 412 was on her phone on TikTok, right? So I would assume he would be able to hear that, right? It's not like uh, the TikTok was silent, right? So I don't know. A couple issues with this, uh, with this thing, but you know, whatever. And, and we know Dylan wasn't sleeping either, so. The first bedroom he stops at and opens the door, he sees no one there. He continues to the next bedroom. Here we know what happens. My thing is, I don't think, why would Kaylee and Maddie have locked the dog in this room, before, you know? I think the dog was originally in this room, but then Brian moved it afterwards i don't know because that doesn't make any sense why wouldn't kaylee like sleep with the dog right i don't know or, or why would they lock it in in this in this room it does that just doesn't make sense downstairs dylan is sleeping the noise from upstairs wakes her up she thinks it's kaylee playing with her dog she gets up and goes to the door and looks out she sees nothing there why would you just get up, open the door, and shut it, right? The suspect then continues down the stairs about three minutes later. But you should be able to hear him walking up and down these stairs. Your door, your door's right there. He Again, okay, why did he pass Dylan's room? He then heads to Zana's room. Outside, there's a security camera picking up some whimpering. Cries in the thud at 4.17. Remember, the, the camera across the street can hear these thuds and shit. But apparently, awake Dylan can't, right? We've learned that Xana was found on the floor, which might explain the thud. Dylan again hears something and looks outside her door. She sees a suspect. Boom! Okay, so look how close they are. <laughs> and he knows that... He knows there's no more threats because he killed them all. So him not just putting a knife in Dylan is is weird. Effect. He walks right past her and leaves. Well, what do you think of that animation? That gives you a clearer idea of what the house layout looked like on King Road, as well as the perpetrator's movements within the house and the time frame required to commit this awful crime. Brian Koberger's car was first spotted in the area on somebody's surveillance camera at about 3.30 a.m. DoorDash arrived at about 4 a.m. Brian's car was also seen again at about... Yeah, and we know 
She ended up with a lake because it, she got door dashes for him. Right? So. Yeah. 404 AM, and he entered the house moments later, which leads us to the door dash delivery. What are the odds that a DoorDash driver shows up at 4 o'clock? As Brian has already been circling the house since 3.30. And then Brian's car is seen within minutes of the DoorDash. Yeah, and I now know you can order DoorDash like as a gift for somebody. So, you can order DoorDash for somebody else. But... What DoorDash did she did they order, or did Brian order for them? Right? And somebody said that Jack in the Box. Their, their delivery is open, twenty four hours, not the inside, but the delivery. So it could have been Door uh, Jack in the Box. That the, just because they were closed on the inside, it doesn't mean that their delivery was still open driver leaving and then he commits the crime minutes later i don't believe xana ordered doordash a jack-in-the-box bag was found on the counter for those of you that aren't familiar that's a fast food restaurant located in pullman washington and it's located right next to brian's apartments my theory is brian used a throwaway phone as well as a prepaid visa or gift card to place an anonymous doordash delivery to the 1122 king road house I really don't see how it could be any sort of coincidence. There's a reason Brian showed up to the house early. There's a reason his car was seen doing circles around the house. There's a reason his car was seen going back and forth in front of the house. I mean, I could explain why. I mean, I've never heard of anybody ordering DoorDash at 4 a.m., right? Uh, being, I don't know, maybe they, they could have, but it's very, it's very abnormal, right? So, yeah. I, I'm I'm not ready to uh, to say Brian uh, ordered it for her, but it's definitely a possibility. House and he drove behind the house and behind the house. Because I I just don't see what he gains by, you know, if he he entered through the back slider and DoorDash came in through the into the into the front door. What is he gaining by ordering them DoorDash? Okay, he's just making sure they're awake. Right, so I don't, I don't buy that really. I mean, if you have a different theory, put it in the comments, and maybe I can, I'll change my mind. But right now, you would want, you would want them asleep. Why would you order DoorDash for them if you're the killer, right? I mean, that's what, that's at least, at least that's what I'm thinking. House, there's this road that has a good view of the back of the house and the front of the house. Check out this image right here. This gives you a slight idea of what Brian may have seen while he was parked up on this road behind King Road. Brian views himself as a criminal mastermind. He had studied killers for years. He studied to their ways. He thought this would be the perfect crime and the DoorDash driver would be an easy fall guy to throw off the investigation. As I've told you in my previously released videos, this seems to be exactly how Brian operated. I believe he was on Facebook, Reddit, and YouTube misdirect. Okay, so I guess uh, Drip Drop here is saying that the police would think the DoorDash uh, delivery guy killed him because he showed up at the same time that they got murdered almost. I mean, I guess, but nobody was thinking that, so it, it obviously didn't work if, if, if that's what he was trying to do, right? So, I don't know. Because the DoorDash car, it's you know you, you you can track his movements too with his phone. Is it you know his phone's on, right? So you can tell that he drove away immediately after dropping the DoorDash off. So that's not gonna work, right? So either Brian was stupid as hell and didn't think that through too much, or he didn't order the DoorDash the investigation so it would make sense that before he committed this crime he wanted to throw misdirection into the mix in brian's eyes the doordash driver would be the prime suspect because if a doordash driver shows up at four o'clock in the morning and then four people end up passed away forever seems like the doordash guy would be the prime suspect it also seems highly unlikely that brian would get so lucky 
to randomly have a DoorDash driver show up as he's awaiting behind the house and he decides to enter the house moments later. Also, theorizing about the door. Yeah, but how is that lucky? You know? I'm just trying to think, you know? I mean, the police are going to check and see the DoorDash car driver was only there a minute or two, okay? So he couldn't have went all the way to the third floor, killed two people up there, down, then killed two people. And that's, he wasn't there that long, okay? So they can easily rule that out. And then you would want everybody asleep or as, you know, almost asleep as much as possible, <laughs> right? I'm just thinking like, if, you know, if I was a murderer, I wouldn't want it someone waking everybody up in the whole house right before I'm about to go in there, right? You will want everybody sleeping. Oh. DoorDash delivery. The jack-in-the-box bag had Zana's name on it. That was found on the kitchen counter. If Zana had ordered food, it was because she was hungry. And if she was hungry, she would have brought that bag into her bedroom with Ethan and she would have enjoyed her meal. Yeah, but we know they... Okay. We know they all were just drinking, right? Kaylee and uh, Madison, they just went to the, the um, food truck. So they're not hungry, right? I'm always hungry after I drink and eat a lot, right? And they were probably smoking weed at, the, at the, wherever they were too. So uh, Xana probably was fucking hungry. <laughs> you know what I mean? It actually makes sense for her to be hungry. It would be weirder if she wasn't hungry, in my opinion. I think she did order the DoorDash. I don't think it was Brian. ...in her bedroom. However, the bag was found on the counter, along with the drink that came with the bag. So apparently, Xana didn't know anything about that order. I think that was... She did, because the, the, the drink was half drunk, you know? So she had to at least... Drink half of the drink, okay? It was an anonymous early morning delivery that confused the occupants of the house, and that's when Dylan heard, somebody's here. In a state of confusion, the food was accepted. Nobody knew who ordered it, and it was placed on the counter. And Xana went back to her bedroom with Ethan. Only minutes later is when Brian entered the household. God, that's fucking creepy. Look at that. That's exactly what, what she saw. Look at that fucking picture. That's creepy as hell, dude. That's a fucking serial killer. Brian obviously entered this house knowing the occupants were awake. When we first heard about this case, we were told everybody was attacked in their sleep. But that's just not the case here. Yeah, every, every, almost everybody was awake now because we know that because of Dylan. Because Dylan was awake. On November 13th, Brian was a predator and these victims were his prey. I don't believe Xana placed that DoorDash order. Brian placed the DoorDash order to confuse detectives and all of us on my... Yeah, I disagree with uh, with old Drippy Drop on that one. But uh, I guess we'll find out at trial, right? I mean, one, one of us is going to be right, so... But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think uh, Brian ordered the DoorDash? And if you think that... Tell me why you think that, okay? Don't just say, yeah, I think he did. Tell me why he would have any reason to order the DoorDash, okay? Don't just say, yeah, I think you're wrong. <laughs> you know? Put what you think actually why he did that or what he would gain from doing that. I can't think of him gaining anything. Find sleuths. He thought he was so smart. But he wasn't smart enough to not leave a sheath with his DNA on it. And he wasn't smart enough to not drive his own vehicle to the crime scene. Look at that, man. What a douche. What a clown. Brian wasn't as smart as he thought he was. Moving on. We're going to very briefly discuss Brian Koberger's sister. In 2011, she starred in a horror movie. Recently, a woman was seen at 1122 King Road, the crime scene. This woman appears to look exactly like Brian Koberger's sister. Yeah, but uh, it could be. 
A lot of people look like that, don't they? I don't know if it is one way or the other, but it's being discussed. I don't know why that would, that would be important. I'm, unless she was helping Brian with the fucking murders by videotaping shit, right? I don't, but, uh, you know, I don't think that's true. So I'm going to stop it here. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um... Let me know if you guys think Brian ordered the DoorDash. And if you do think he ordered the DoorDash, tell me why you think he ordered the DoorDash. But until next time, True Crime King, out.